Ezekiel 37. And we'd like to notice beginning at that first verse. The preacher said, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and I answered O Lord God thou knowest Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. That's enough right there. Amen. Last year we used as a thought bringing life to dry bones. All right, all right. Amen. This year, we'd like to use as a thought, ministering in the midst of a mess. All right, all right. <laughs> ministering in the midst of a mess. The book of Ezekiel records the activity of the prophet during the exile in Babylonia. His message was directed at his fellow captives and also to the Hebrew people who were still at home in Palestine. Both groups maintained their obstinance and their impenitent attitude even during the capture of Jerusalem by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar and the exile of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, together with a large segment of the population in 597 BC. Ezekiel was called to prophesy in 592 BC. He was assigned the task of denouncing the rebellious house of Israel and of the uh, foretelling the destruction of Jerusalem and the deportation of still greater numbers. Six years after Ezekiel had begun to preach, his words came true. In 586 BC, Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem and brought all of but a few of the survivors to Babylonia. All right, all right. But even in Israel's unfaithfulness, God's mercy was still not exhausted. Amen. Isn't that good to know that no matter how we live, God is still merciful? Amen. He directed Ezekiel to proclaim the good news that the exile would end and that Israel would be restored to her position as the instrument of God's salvation to all men. Amen. Walk with me around the text. Amen. The prophet said that the hand of the Lord was upon him. Amen. And he was placed in a valley full of bones. All right, all right. And it said that the bones were very dry. Yeah. Right. In other words, the prophet was placed in the middle of a mess. Right. See, too often, too often ministers feel that everything is going to be fine when they get into a church. All right. They visited and they preached a few Sundays for them and, and things looked good from the outside. All right, all right, all right. The choir singing real good, y'all go girls. 
Amen. Deacons praying and causing the roof to tremble, calling on the name of the Lord so hard. Amen. The spirit just running free and sisters getting up, running out of the hats and all and just praising God. And it looks good on the outside, but what you can't see is the problem. Amen. This, 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 this same choir that's singing so melodiously on Sunday morning, but just on Saturday evening at practice. Amen. Somebody had to step in between the sisters to stop them from about to fight because they said that they wasn't going to sing their song. Amen. It's pastor's anniversary. I got to let them hear me sing my song. And you going to stop me from singing on the day when we're going to have a lot of folk in the house. Amen. The same choir. That sang so good a little while ago. It's the same choir in which one won't sing because I can sing that song better than she can. Amen, amen, amen. What you can't see is the problem. Amen. The deacons that say that I got your back, Pastor, I'm glad that you're here. We love you, but in conference time, they're the same ones that raise more hell. Y'all come on, I ain't got to come back. Amen. Come on here right now. Amen. Amen. The same one, amen, the same one that'll tell pastor I got your back and pat you on the back and say amen, preach pastor, is the same one that gets back there in the office and said, pastor, look at him, you better preach and make us happy. If not, we voted you in. And we can vote you out. Y'all come on and talk. Y'all scared? Amen. The same sisters that's getting up shouting on Sunday morning, running all over the church. It's the same one that after church is gone, when they hug you with those fake hugs, get on the telephone and talk about one another. Amen. And what we have is a mess. Hey, 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 amen. Somebody touch your neighbor and tell them we got a mess on our hands. That's the wrong neighbor. Touch the other side and tell them we got a mess on our hands. Hey, amen. But Pastor Carlisle, when you're called by God, sometimes he will place you in a place that's in a mess. Amen. And please allow me to submit this to you this morning. There are no perfect churches. I don't care who you are, I don't care who your pastor is, there are no perfect churches. There is some mess somewhere in every church. Amen. And you can go around saying, oh, we just had the best, we just good, everything is just wonderful, you just don't know it yet. Amen sometimes, amen to somebody, amen. When confusion rises in the church, you tend to see members as well as preachers, they get up and they go somewhere that looks peaceful only to find that there's some hell over there also. Amen. And if there is a perfect church, the minute you get there, it ain't perfect no more. Amen. Amen. Man of God, woman of God, you were not called to straighten out the mess. You were called to be used as an instrument to fix the problem. Can I get a witness in here? See, God does the fixing. You just have to be willing and be a willing vessel to be used by the Lord. Amen. Let me use this analogy. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. Amen. When, 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 when some people feel that well, because of my schooling, I went to Anderson or I went to Jacksonville Seminary and I learned all of these different philosophies and I feel that when I get in there, I can straighten out the problem. Some feel that I have a personality to deal with all people. I can deal with anybody and we can fix this problem right here. But my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you, if Satan has his hand in it, I don't care how many degrees you have on the wall. I don't care how charismatic you are. Without the Lord, you won't solve anything. 
Can I get some help in here? Amen. Amen. Let me use this analogy. Let me get in here. Amen. A monkey wrench All right. is only a tool. All right. A monkey wrench is only a tool. Amen. Anyway, and, and, and it's an ugly kind of tool with a, a crook neck and seems like it's got a big mouth, a big mouth that you can just adjust it and it will, you know, sometimes it can have a beard. It's, it's an ugly tool, but it's useful. That's right. That's right. <laughs> It can be ugly, but it's useful. Amen. I'm talking about a monkey wrench. Amen. But without the plumber, it's no good. That's going to catch up with some of y'all before y'all get the bell. Amen. 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 It's a good tool. It's very handy, but it's no good without the plumber. Uh -uh, y'all, y'all with me? You still with me? See, the plumber does all the adjusting. It's the plumber that does all the loosening. It's the plumber that does all the tightening. It's the plumber that does all the tightening and untightening. It's the plumber that does all the twisting and and all the turning. You gotta understand what I'm saying. It's the plumber. The wrench only allows itself to be moved. Are uh, y'all with me in here? Yeah. Amen. It's the plumber that uses the wrench and he does the fixing. Right. Are y'all still with me? Yeah. Watch this. Whenever the problem is fixed, yeah. the wrench don't get the glory. Whenever the problem is fixed, it's always the plumber that gets the glory for fixing the problem. Okay, are y'all with me here? Somebody's catching on. Amen. And if the problem, if you get another leak somewhere, you don't call the monkey wrench. But you call on that same plumber to come back in and fix that problem. Somebody gonna catch on after a while. Amen. But watch this. Sometimes the wrench can't fix the pipe that's messed up. Alright, I don't care how much that plumber twist and turn and tighten and loosen. Sometimes you just got a messed up pipe. But watch this. The plumber ain't going to throw his monkey wrench away. Because I'm giving somebody a prophetic word right now. I'm giving somebody a prophetic word right now. The plumber won't throw the wrench away. But what the plumber will do, he will use that wrench to remove that pipe that's messed up. And he'll put another pipe in place, do a little twisting and turning, and let the water flow on like it's supposed to. Amen. If some of you playing like you don't understand what I'm trying to say, if you're trying to interfere with God's program, you ain't nothing but a messed up old pipe. And God is getting ready to move you out of the way and replace you with another pipe so his program will roll on anyhow. I don't know who I'm talking to in the house today. Amen. Amen. That's a prophetic word for somebody right there.